Should you change your PE exam? As someone who's taken this thing more than once myself, I know it's very discouraging to see the big red fell on the screen. Especially if you're repeating this exam three, four, five times, even more. Now, when this happens, many of you actually reach out to me and you want to switch to water resources or transportation. Now, these two do indeed have the highest pass rates year after year. You can go check that out at the NCEES website. But the question is, should you? Hey, I'm Isaac Okison here with Civil Engineering Academy, and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing what I think is the best approach based on my own experience to deal with this question, both as a repeat taker myself and 10 plus years helping other civil engineers just like you get over the challenge of taking this PE exam. Now, if you have found yourself at a crossroads and need some pointers, stick with me till the very end of this video because this was made just for you. So with that, we will see you in a minute. <laughs> All right, so let's cut right to the chase on this. Should you change your PE exam after failing the exam? My really odd take on this is no except for a very few amount of cases that I'm gonna actually cover in a future video. Sticking with your exam makes a lot more sense and I'm gonna tell you why. Now, the first thing that I can actually think of is that for your next try and taking this exam, you're not gonna be starting from scratch anymore. Just by prepping and taking the exam already, you've already gained a ton of knowledge and experience to help you pass this thing on your next try. So let's break it down right now. So the first thing is that during your own exam prep, you learned a bunch. You know exactly where the equations and graphs are and charts in your own discipline that you can find in the handbook. You've learned to navigate that thing really well. You've also poured over the codes and standards, and you're going to end up knowing those pretty well simply because you've been putting some time in there. You also have a very good grasp of the technical content hours of st after hours of studying this stuff. You've also practiced a variety of problems, so you know the different ways in which concepts can be tested and different things thrown at you that relate to a particular topic that they throw at you. So that just deals with your exam prep. Now, if you, by actually taking the exam, there's a bunch of other things that you've learned as well. Now you understand the look and the feel of the exam simply by going through the whole exam experience. And that honestly cannot be understated. Going through the exam itself is a huge step up from not knowing anything about it when you first jumped into this game. And what I'm talking about here is you know about the testing center already and all the nuances to deal with the testing center. You also know everything there is about actually taking the exam. You know what it looks like. You know the difficulty of the exam. All of those things are an experience that you didn't have before. And as Albert Einstein once said, the only source of knowledge is experience. Okay, another thing is that you've gotten used to all the functions of the CBT exam. I'm talking about the flagging questions, the search function, and how it operates between the use of it at the handbook and the use of it with your codes and your standards. All of those little nuances you've learned because you've taken the exam before. You also are familiar with how the exam questions are worded, how graphics look, how figures look, and how tables are used. Anything that the NCEES is used to throwing at you, you've gone through that experience. You can also now spot the tricks that the NCEES weaves into the questions to trip you up or that we feel like try to trip us up. You're also familiar with any type of AIT or alternative item type questions that they throw at you. You also know how many that you might anticipate on the exam where before you might not have been so sure. But going through the exam experience, you know that now. Also, if you keep with the same exam, sometimes you may even see the same problem pop up again on your exam, or at least the same concepts pop up over and over again. But many times people recognize problems that they've had in the past. You've also gained some serious experience with how long it takes you personally to get through the exam and that time pressure that's involved to get through the exam. That can't be understated. Now, when you consider all of those things, switching over to a different exam may not be the best choice for you. 
you are literally going to be throwing away all of that knowledge that you've gained just by going through the exam journey a couple times before. Okay, maybe not all of it, but a lot of it. And especially now that the specs changed in April of 2024, which I covered in another video, you want to go check that one out. There's no breadth topics um, among all the exams anymore. So they're all related to the core content that's related to your depth exam. You definitely want to check out that video. Go click the link. Now, while a few things do still overlap with the new specs, now more than ever, changing your exam means you're going to lose pretty much everything. So my short answer, which applies to most cases, is to stick with the same exam, if at all possible. If you need an example of that, take a look at myself. I am a repeat taker of the Geotech exam. When I failed the second time, I knew it was because I had only missed one or two questions that I got wrong. I was so close. And the reason why I knew that is because in Texas, they do produce those results. And I had a friend take it and my score was higher than his. I knew I was super close on that one. But it's so frustrating to, to fail and that you start questioning everything that's going on. You wonder if you're taking the right exam. You wonder, oh, you know, how you're going to do this. It's a way waste of money, all that jazz. Finally, on my third try, I could have switched because in the, in the industry where I am working, I really work with all five major disciplines, maybe not transportation so much, but definitely the four other ones. So I could have switched that up and chosen a different depth exam that I wanted to maybe explore, but I actually stuck with it and eventually I got it. And honestly, that's what happens to most people. You really just need to sharpen the edges of your exam prep here to make things happen on your next try. So now that you know my, say, controversial take on this topic, here's some of the reasons behind that. Let's look at the downsides of switching exams. Very first thing is that it is wasted time and effort. You have already spent months and a lot of your weekends, late nights, early mornings, lunch times, studying for this particular exam topic. Now, switching over to a different exam would make much of the study time that you've already dumped into this thing, all the effort that you've dumped into this, much of it is going to be irrelevant. The majority of it, if not all of it, is going to end up going down the drain, along with all of your knowledge of the technical content that you've been studying and the feel for the exam itself. Now, the second thing I can think of is that you're going to be starting from scratch. Just by prepping for your exam, you got really familiar with the codes and standards for your particular discipline, as well as the sections in the handbook. You start getting used to using those things over and over again. And if you switch to a different exam, you have to start over and learn that book again where things are related to your own content from the very beginning. Again, that sucks. An example of this might be if you're taking the construction exam, you probably know the ASCE 37 code like the back of your hand. You been using it and preparing for your exam using that manual. Now, if you go ahead and switch to water resources, that means you're going to have to go through a whole new set of standards again. There may be less, but you're still going to have to know them. That includes the TSS 2018, which you probably haven't even looked at. Okay, this leads me to my next negative point, and that is time cost, because you're probably going to be starting all over again at level one when you decide to switch exams. You're going to have to take time to learn new stuff and get used to the new codes and standards that apply to that exam again. And what that does is that ends up delaying you getting your license usually for quite some time because you're starting over. Now this one is probably the most painful and this is a common complaint among everybody taking the PE exam and that's the financial costs involved with switching. From a financial perspective, switching exams may not seem like a very good choice. And the reason for that is because now you actually have to buy additional study material that you didn't have. You have to buy new resources. Starting over with this exam experience like you're starting at ground zero. And again, because of the removal of the breath topics back in April, all of the PE study materials that are out there have to have separate resources now, one for each exam. So you can't just get breath material. It's going to cover everything. Now you have to get into specific specifics. Okay, lastly, but most importantly, we have number five, and that is simply that there is no guarantees of the other exam being any easier. Say, for example, you were taking construction and end up failing it, but you notice you did pretty good on hydraulics and hydrology on that particular exam, you would probably think you can switch over to water resources, right? Not necessarily. Each exam now is very heavy on the depth stuff, we know, because they got rid of all the breath material as of the spec change last April. This means that while you can get a few hydraulics questions on the construction exam, you can bet that they're way easier on that exam than they are on water resources. 
So even if another exam seems a bit easier than the exam you've been taking, a lack of knowledge in that depth stuff puts you at a disadvantage right from the get-go. Okay, so now you may be asking yourself, Isaac, if switching exams is not a good choice, what do you think I should be doing to pass the exam? All right, no problem. I got you covered. So here's what I did to pass my own geotech exam that you can do too. Which exam you end up taking is just one of the many factors that go into passing the PE. Instead of only thinking about which exam to take, you also need to take a very hard look at your study approach. So first, are you spending the majority of your time practicing problems and practice exams? Or are you focusing too much on theory? This is the most common pitfall that most test takers fall into. Now, covering theory in detail is good for, say, a college course, but it is not great for passing the PE exam. That's exactly what a student of ours named Tucker did. He took the transportation exam seven times. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Seven times. And for every new attempt, he would just load up on stacks and stacks of practice problems and exams just to soak in as much as he could. Now, second, you can do other things. You can change the resources that you are actually using, and you probably have to. If you're decided to take the self-study route, then you're going to want to look into getting a review course. This not only gives you more study material, but also more structure and support while also holding your hand for you to be more accountable. And that is exactly what happened to Mackenzie Allen. And you can check out her video as well. She tried to do it on her own first, but then joined our P review course for her second try at transportation, ended up crushing that thing. Okay, and the last thing, finally, the third thing that I can think of is that there are psychological aspects to taking the exam. If you have a good grasp of the technical content and you've done well on practice exams and practice problems, then you need to check your test taking strategies. You need to start thinking about if timing is an issue during your exam prep. If you're going through an exam, are you running out of time? If that's a yes, then question why is that? Maybe you're spending too much time on complex problems that you should skip and focus on the easier ones instead first. Or maybe you're rushing through the exam because the nerves are high and you're just trying to meet that six minute mark per question. If that's the case, you may be just making basic math errors or maybe it's unit conversions or something like that. You may be skipping steps in the problem solving process in order to go fast. So these are some other things that you should probably give some thought to just as much as you think about switching exams. When it comes to passing the PE, these other things play a role just as big as which exam that you're going to take. So that's going to wrap up this video for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. That is my hot take on whether you should be changing your PE exam. It's a very common question that I get all the time. In a future video, I'll be covering a few scenarios which make sense for you to switch exams and maybe that makes a good choice for you. But most of the time, sticking with the exam that you've been studying and that you've taken or maybe failed. So the best approach 99% of the time is to keep the momentum going. And we're going to be here every step of the way to help you. If you have failed water resources or the geotech exam before and you need to shake things up a bit, our review course is perfect for you. And we have those two ready to go, all updated to the new specs. You can find the link below in the description. Go check that out. And if you're hitting a wall on construction, transportation, or structures, we're going to have those launched very soon as well. So go sign up to our wait list to be the first to know when those go live. Go check that link out as well. So thanks for watching the video. Let me know in the comments your opinion about this topic. I love hearing those. Definitely leave a comment. Would you switch exams if you've been failing it a couple times? Have you? Did you? I don't know. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to know more tips, tools, and resources that we share right here to help you on your journey to pass your PE exam. I'm Isaac Okasin with Civil Engineering Academy, helping you to crush your dreams of becoming a professional civil engineer and getting these exams out of the way. So with that, we will see you on the next one. Thanks for being here and uh, adios. Bye.